Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Sunshine on Lathe. If you're still enjoying the save, drop a like on the video. That would be tremendous. So today, we've got a, at least one game. Hopefully two. One would be kind of sad, but also I suppose we couldn't really complain too much given the way that we finished the end of the season. Unusually, I'm weirdly confident about coming into Harrogate today because I actually thought we played reasonably well against them uh, in the last league game. And I think we we're a bit unfortunate uh, to lose the game in the way that we did. And if we were to get through and found ourselves against someone like Wrexham, I think I know how to beat Wrexham's new tactic because I figured it out in the final 20 minutes against them. Didn't stop us from losing 4-1, but we created all of our chances in the final 20 minutes of that game. And I do wonder if I found their kryptonite. So there might still be a route for us, but I feel like it does rely on us beating Harrogate first and then having to meet Wrexham in the next one. Now, if we do get knocked out, you won't know from the length of the video because we'll talk about some other stuff because I don't want to give away any spoilers. Is there any ability for you to transfer list players that, aren't, that you aren't using in order to gain some more funds? Watch from Toronto, Canada. Oh, nice. Um, So yeah, there is, but there's really no point uh, because most of the time at this level, unless they're stupidly good sought after players, like a Curtis Thomas type of player, and even we're not even getting bids for him, then other clubs just will not bid on them. Uh, we did just have a contract offer to Scott Winfield, uh, but that's about it, really. I think it's actually really good at punching up against better teams to fall short when trying to break down some other poorer teams. I mean, yeah, I, I fully agree with that. And we do need to figure something out for that. Um, um, because if you look at the results, like we should have beaten Solihull more. We did really well against Crawley. I got that relatively lucky draw against Dagenham, to be fair. I think we were decent against Harrogate. We've looked, r r I feel like I figured out Wrexham a little bit as well. We've got decent quality against some of those bigger sites and, you know, dropping points against uh, Welling and dropping points against Chelmsford City. But if we were to go up at some point, I think this would come in very handy for us. Really time to find a goalkeeper with a double barrel last name so you don't have to worry about it anymore. That is a good point. It's, it'll be a load off my mind and that'll be one of my first tasks in the summer. I don't know why, but I've watching your background video about how you set up Blackhaven. I kind of want them to do better than Whitport as well. Oh, God. Jack, Jack with the with the controversial take there. I think I'd like... Just breaking character for a second. I'd like to see them do well because it would be a proof of concept. And I really want to see if you can actually get a team controlled by the computer to do what you want in this kind of style. And I think it would be a really good step forward for any other type of save that anyone wants to do like this if we can get this to work. So, yeah, I am kind of hoping they do quite well. I feel like BPK and Thomas do chills moves face packs as they are already cemented legendary status. It's funny you should say that because I decided to go and do exactly that. So Curtis Thomas now has a face. Thank goodness. I'm going to try and sort out at some point the one that will automatically assign faces to regens, even doing it by ethnicity, which would be really, really cool. But I haven't got time to sort that out right now. But yeah, so Curtis Thomas has a face. As does my man, Ben putman Kitely, who is still one star. I don't get it. How can a player play this well and still just never seem to grow in any way? It's really strange, but hey, he's actually had his best season since his breakout year for us uh, this year. And that's really saying something about 20-year-old BPK. So fair play to the lad. So here it is. Alex Johnson, the regen manager of Harrogate Town. And it's Wrexham versus Woking. I feel like Wrexham should win that, particularly as they're at home. It's a sold-out stadium here at Weatherby Road in Harrogate as well. They're missing a couple of people, particularly Scrimshaw, who played against us earlier this season. I'm certain of it. We've never beaten them, but that doesn't mean we can't. And we should be fully fresh here, as fresh as we could possibly be. So, Defty's still sort of recovering, but that's just good at match fitness stuff. I think Defty's good enough to start here. Wakeling and Thomas. Billum, Kasimba and Adabati, or do we go with Bishop? This is the big question. I'm tempted to start Kasimba today, because I do feel like over... Oh, no, I think we probably should start Bishop. Then Galvin, Cartwright, Sigwe, Defty. That's, that's the way to go, I think. As for the bench... Got lots of options for once, which is nice. So right side, right back, left back, striker. The only thing we're lacking here is a defensive. I'm probably going to bring in... I'm going to bring in Perez de Gracia instead of Hammett because I don't feel like I want to take off either of our strikers. And the only reason I would do is because of injury. So I'm probably going to make sure we've got someone that can slip in here. Actually, no, maybe it's better to put Kazimba in there, to be fair. That way we've got options in every position. I honestly just kind of feel like if we play as well against them as we did, generally speaking, in the game in the league, there's a good chance of us maybe pulling something off here. It'd be very, very nice. But honestly, just the fact that we've even done this in our first season in this division is shocking. Right, let's go. Let's have this. Let's see if Curtis Thomas can sort of cement himself with his hero status at the club with some magical performance today away at Harrogate. I don't know. We'll have to see. We've got to be good from these situations for a start. This is the, the first key thing is to not concede from an indirect free kick today. That alone will probably halve the number of goals we could potentially concede in this match. Hughes, BPK's buzzing about as always. Although they are getting a lot of... That's going to be a long-range strike. Okay, good. A couple of blocks in there. Bit of pressure on them. That's nice. If we can win it in these sort of areas, like Terry Bishop's just done, this is exactly what I want to see from us. Terry Bishop's going to have a run... Oh, imagine if Terry Bishop scored. He's into the box. Can he find the pass, though? No, he can't. But again, nice work from Bishop there. That's what I want to see. Oh, go on, Curtis. It's a bit far out for him, but he's gone for the smacker. And, wow, he nearly got scythed down there and somehow still got it. Gets his shot away from distance. Hits the target with it, at least. A couple of long shots for us. Early doors, but nice start. Billum. Jarvis clears. It's going to come back to... Actually, it's going to come to Rocco. Billum with a lovely ball, actually. It's a really nice cross. Because what doesn't seem to be happening today is there's not a lot of fast breaks from either team, which is usually where we get a lot of our success. So we're having to break them down a little bit more today, which we are capable of doing, but we have to take a slightly different approach in order to get away with it. Skendi. Oh, that's a bit of space, actually. Hughes. Don't let him cut inside. 
I mean, it's a really good goal from Tommy Hughes. We've just started to flag a little bit. And I just think that the end of last season, I know we did really well against Carlisle. And that was a good performance. But we've just not really turned up so far today. We got caught out a little bit. I mean, I don't even know if we did get caught out a little bit, unfortunately. Def Defty just gets sort of lined up here by Hughes, gets inside him. It's a good effort. It's just a good goal. Pat McCartley's not had the best day, which is the last thing you want, really. Billum's ball. <sighs> Come on, Terry, get across there. He's, he's just not got the pace. That's the one thing about Kasimba that he does have over Bishop, I think, is a little bit extra mobility. And that can be really, really important. Billum. Can he find the cross to someone? He does. Pat McCartley, and it's a good strike, but it's well blocked by the defender. Yeah, pretty poor, really. Uh, from us in the first half. Didn't really create anything. That's the issue. I'm actually going to turn on the focuses of the wide areas so we can try to get into those spaces a little bit quicker. Up the tempo, move the ball around a little bit faster. Not as much getting it forward faster, just moving it around a little bit quicker. They know they've not been up to much today and they need to be better. But at 1-0, anything could happen. We could score a cheeky set piece goal. We could do anything just to get back into this match, show some intensity. That's a bit better from Defty. Winning it higher up the pitch. One of the things I really want is for like, what in the... Well, hang on, what? that's a goal? Curtis Thomas has equalized for us. I thought they were all offside. I, I, they look like they were all offside. Don't know why they were all offside, but there we go. Hang on, let's check this out. Oh, wow. Okay, let me just change the angle. There's one guy who set to mark Jacob Wakeling and is playing our entire team onside. I mean, that is absolutely shambolic defending. And Curtis Thomas, look at that for that. Just getting into the right position, getting on the end of it. BPK's cross, the two new faces combined. And by new faces, I mean literally new faces. Yes, again. Wakeling knocks it down for Curtis Thomas. The second half has really taken off. Putman Kitely now with the intensity. This is more like it. BP goes into the box. Can he square it? It's a great tackle. If we're heading to extra time, which I believe it does, or is it penalty straight away? I actually don't remember. Um, but for now, second half's been all us, which is phenomenal. And they've got an injury in that midfield, which means that they're basically operating with the walking wounded in one position and a really key position as well. And it's all the way through. Gowan's there again. The pressure is really building on them now. This is what I like to see. What a second half turnaround this would be if we managed to turn this into a, a victory. And is that a penalty? It bloody well is. Hang on. I don't think Curtis Thomas is set to take the pens. He is now. Oh my God. Imagine if Curtis Thomas scores this. Come on, CT. You can do it, bud. Smashes it home. Harrogate one, Whitport two. What a second half turnaround from the Portman. That was unexpected. They've actually dug deep and come up with something special. Thomas with the low finish. It's 2-1. And they've got a walking wounded. Right, now we can make a sub, potentially. Time wasting, playing for set pieces. We've got basically about five minutes left here. Four minutes. Oh, come on. You can do it, lads. You've been so good in this second half. We haven't given them a thing. Great tackle. And again, Putman Kiley to bring it away for us. Oh, surely this is the moment where we wrap this up. Maybe. Come on, BPK. Wakeling's flying. BPK's already in the box. Can he square it? Wakeling! Thomas! And Forrester puts it in, and we are heading to the next round of the playoffs. What a second half performance. First, a little bit of a lucky break with Curtis Thomas's goal. Still a great finish from the lad, don't get me wrong. Then the penalty, and now Curtis Thomas has provided the ultimate... I mean, he's got the assist as well. What a lad. Look at that. He could shoot there, but instead he's found an unbelievable ball to Jaden Forrester to wrap it up away at Harrogate. I knew we could pull something off here. What a second half. Wow. Um, that was an unexpected turnaround. We did not look in this game in the first half, and we have really shown true quality to come back and pull something off here. God, why couldn't we do that in those final games of the season? Not that it would have made much difference, but the fact that we've even won this match is a true testament to what we're capable of. Yes! Harrogate won, Whitport three, Curtis Thomas, man of the match, two goals and an assist, 35 for the season, and God knows how many assists. What an absolute God. Oh, except we don't get Wrexham, do we? There's a draw. And we got Sully Hull Moors. Okay, that's gone out the bastard window. However, if Wrexham were to beat Crawley, I think I know how we could potentially beat them, which might actually be a better thing, because we did get 2-0 up against Sully Hull Moors before throwing it away. So we've got previous here. Right, guys, we're back. So, Sully Hull. Wrexham versus Crawley. Um... I mean, we can't really be thinking about stuff like that. It's about this, like, our record against them isn't fantastic. We've not beaten them, but we've only played them twice. Uh, they did beat us 3-0 early this season, though, which is a bit concerning. But I think we looked much better against them in the most recent game. If it wasn't for that last-minute penalty, that would have been a victory. But then, you know, that's just how it goes, isn't it? Right, um, what to do? Because there's no team news, uh, which means they're basically fully fresh, and that's kind of the last thing we know. But at the end of the day, if we're going to go up, we need to be able to do it by beating the teams that we can beat rather than relying on injuries and whatnot so i guess it's not the end of the world um what worked well i feel like i feel like defty he made the mistake for the goal but i still kind of just trust him a little bit more than tommy williams however i feel like maybe honestly i might no i'm gonna stick with terry bishop today i was tempted to bring in kasimba but because he did do quite well when he came on and bishop wasn't exactly playing fantastically but i think i just kind of want to go with just go with it for now as for the, i mean honestly there's not really many changes i would really want to make i 
we won the last game. There's no reason to make any changes, really. Nobody's back from fitness or anything. Uh, oh, crap. We've only got an analyst report. They can see 36% from crosses and 66 from place shots. That's kind of interesting. And they're vulnerable to facing 4-4-2s. Four, four I mean, we don't really play a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, it kind of is a 4-4-2, four, four, but not really. But it means we could potentially push up to a 4-4-2, four, four, maybe. But one thing I did like against Harrogate was how aggressive in the press we were. And I'm actually tempted to go and just see what happens if we just press everyone. I feel like this will win more fouls, or not win more fouls, but concede more fouls. And that's my concern. Um... But I do kind of want to see what happens if we try to go a bit more aggressive and just really press at them. Like, we used that increased defensive line last time to a good effect. Obviously, it doesn't really apply here, but it might squeeze the play up a little. But obviously, you're vulnerable in behind. But I don't know. I mean, what we're really relying on today, unfortunately, as is a lot of the cases this season, is Curtis Thomas to put in a blinder. And I don't know how long he can keep doing it. He did it in the last game, but I don't know if he can do it again. Come on. Show me what you're made of somebody do something special for us tonight and just as long as we don't concede like a, an indirect free kick that's all i want just not concede one of those that's just all i need from it if we lose we lose but yeah we'll see that's uh, not a bad ball actually putman carly locks it down for thomas i don't think he's really got the... oh what a ball oh my god i mean okay i said i wanted some magic but that right there from curtis thomas is un bloody believable we've scored inside two minutes here putman cartley knocks it down to him and i thought okay fair enough what's he gonna do and then he's just gone you know what have a bang on that what a f what a ball and again wakeling with the composure to go around the goalkeeper 23rd of the season for him and we lead away at solihull moors we've already got something to hang on to we've got a lot of the ball too which is very unusual for us if we could just hang on to that for a bit, that'd be nice. But yeah, I mean, that right there is practically written him in folklore already. Galvin now with a bit of space. He can find a cross, perhaps, or get fouled, perhaps. Putman Kiley! Oh, it's in off the post! It's 2 0! Ben Putman Kiley scores his 10th goal of the season, and we are 2 0 up away at Solihull Moors. Ryan Galvin with the assist. Sorry, my throat is going here. What a finish! I mean, that right. Who else but the two main men stepping up? Lovely ball from Galvin. I thought this would over overshot everybody, but look at this for a finish from Putman Kiley. On the right foot, in off the post on the near side. Oh, it's 2 0 after 15 minutes. Now, Remember, we were 2 0 up against them last time. And you know what happened there? So let's not get ahead of ourselves too much. But surely we can't throw it away twice in a row. Okay, he doesn't need to because Cartwright stepped in there for him. Galvin with a bit of space again. They're not closing him. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're not closing him down, he says, as he immediately wins the ball. Turns out they didn't need to, as Barrow whips his shot wide. They still look like they've got some danger in them. It would also be the ultimate in revenge after what happened in the league. But I'm a little bit concerned about that overloading the back post here. Just don't let him get the cross in. Oh! That was fortunate. We got away with that there. That's a nice ball. There's, now this, the problem is this now leaves this enormous gap that we're not shuffling across to because of the narrow defensive line. Although that time it actually paid off for us. Galvin. Wakeling doesn't win. Yes, he does. Jacob Wakeling's through. Finds Curtis Thomas. And it's saved by Nightingale. That could have been 3 0 and practically curtains in the first half there. Wow. Wow. Half time and we are 2 0 to the good. 0 0 in the other game. Wakeling and Putman Kitely with Curtis Thomas heavily evolved and winning fouls. Part of me feels like he will, I want to change something, but I also just really don't because of how well things are going so far. And I really just don't want to touch it other than maybe some defensive shuffles. Like, honestly, just getting the ball up to the front two and then winning. I think it's because they're winning some of the duels against some of their centre-backs. And I find that Curtis Thomas does this a lot by instead of trying to challenge them in the air, he sort of peels away, drops short and then brings it down. And it works terrifically. But we are blocking shots for days right now. Just getting bodies in front of everything at the moment. And that is very, very encouraging. Sayer, get out to him. Oh, no, that's going to be a long range strike. And oh, for God's sake, with the long ranges. Well, there it goes. It's, they're back in the game, and I think they're just going to keep popping them from range because that just seems to work. Couldn't get out to him quick enough, but it doesn't matter because it's going straight in. Um, seems like the further away you are, the more likely it is to go in. Nobody really gets out to him quick enough. Goalkeeper's unsighted, and it's 2-1. <sighs> Here we go. Maybe we can come up with some. Pop McCartney and Thomas! That's offside, isn't it? It's obviously going to be offside. It's not offside! Thomas has given us another one! It's Sully Hall 1, Whitport 3, and BPK has assisted two goals today now. No, wait. No, he hasn't. He got one as well. Look at that for a ball. And we've actually scored an indirect free kick, no less. Wow. Oh, how the turntables. Two goals for CT. Not two goals. He's not got any goals. That was his first goal, wasn't it? With enough pressure on their goalkeeper, Papa Kitely might be able to... Oh, no, Ben. No, 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 no. Oh, God. Now we're down to 10 men. Papa Kitely's not been sent off in such a long time, and he's done such a good performance today. He got a goal and an assist, and now he's been red carded. He's on a booking, <laughs> basically. I don't need another red card, eh? That would be the worst news. I mean, those have come off so many times for us this season. Oh, well played. Jaden Forrester's won it. CT's miles offside, though. 
If he could just get himself back on. He's found Forrester's in. He scored again. It's 4-1. Jaden Forrester has smashed us 4-1 up in the playoff semi-final. I actually can't believe that's gone in. Jacob Wakeling with the assist this time. And it's like the Carlisle game has been a... Actually, it's not even that. It's like since the second half against Harrogate, we've just been a different team. Wakeling with a lovely ball. Look at that for a touch. And just ping. Goalkeeper can't do anything about it. Seventh of the year for Jaden Forrester. And surely, surely we are through. Right? No? Well, like everything is starting with them having a throw out on this side and go and win it. Oh, that's a really good goal from Mejia. I think um, whoever that was at the left back spot, I think it was Galvin, should be doing better there. He shouldn't just be letting him have a free shot at the back post. 4-2 with 17 minutes left. Um, oh, come on, defender. That's just poor. This block. Block. There we go. Wakeling doesn't win it. Those are the kind of situations where, oh, what on earth? Great save by O'Reilly again. I mean, Solihull are throwing everything that they've got at this match right now. Bell. Not Bell. Ball. Oh, crap. They've got so many players in the box, though. Here we go. Sean Martin. Can he just run with it? That's what we need. Just run with that ball, Sean. Keep it going, bud. Round the side for Thomas. Oh, and he nearly has a fifth goal for us there. That would have seen us... That would have wrapped it up for us right there. Well played, Cartwright. That is terrific football. Wakely finally wins one. Curtis Thomas back to him. Can he square it back to his teammate? I don't think he will. He might. Thomas has scored again. It's 5-2. Curtis Thomas grabs his second goal of the night. And what a bloody game to put us into the playoff final. Jacob Wakeling finally won a header there, and that just set us away. I genuinely did not think he'd be able to get this back to CT, but he's just held up long enough. CT's peeled away, and he's scored another one. Four goals in two playoff matches, and he's got assists in both, I think. Uh, he's done well to sort of just hold the guy up there. Still a few minutes to go, but they're not going to score three in the next four minutes. So I think we can be pretty safe in the fact that we're going to win this game, but we are at least going to concede another goal as Sobawale grabs another one back for Solihull. God, they really have gone all guns blazing in this second half. What an incredible game of football. 5-3 away from home. After Putman Kiley was sent off, I mean, don't know who's marking Sobawale here, but no one, apparently. Right, Forrester, clear it. There we go. Thomas has a chance to bring it down by peeling away, and he's just skinned the defender. Oh, go on, Curtis. You know you want to. And he's been fouled by Matthews, and that is going to be a red card for Matthews as well. It's just been an absolute free-for-all today. Eight goals, two red cards. Oh, what more do you want? And Crawley are beating Wrexham. I'm not too bothered by that, actually. I, I thought we played all right against Crawley in both games against them this season. Wow, we really are killing time here, aren't we? <laughs> Cartwright dinks it through. That's going to go out of play, and surely that will be the final whistle here at Solihull Moors. This is the kind of result we needed. It so makes up for those missed results towards the end of the season. Not winning against Harrogate there. Throwing away the result against Solihull Moors as well. And now we've come and beaten them 5-3 on their own ground with 10 men in the end. Wow, what a victory. Ben Matthews, yeah, he didn't do too well there. Two go sorry, two goals and an assist for Curtis Thomas. A goal and two assists for Jacob Wakeling. A goal and an assist for Putman Kitely. Just perfect. So it will be Crawley versus Whitport Athletic. What a bloody match. Putman Kitely will miss the final, though, which is the one big concern because Sean Martin will have to start, and I'm not totally confident in that. We may have to rely on the others. We've come good right when we need to. The 4-1 against Carlisle. We turn it around to a 3-1 away at Harrogate, and then the 5-3. The fact that we've scored that many goals recently, really, we just seem to have found our form again, finally. I'll, I'll happily take that poor run of form if it meant that we ended up with this, quite frankly, because I think we were going to get in the playoffs anyway, and I'd much rather sacrifice some results there to have them now. Swings and roundabouts and all that jazz. So if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, I mean, I bloody have, drop a like on the video. That'd be gorgeous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be terrific as well. I stream on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays and sometimes at the weekends as well. So go follow over there. Link in the description. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the playoff final against Crawley Town. They're a decent side. Don't get me wrong. They came second after all, I think. But we have got a decent record against them, I think. So you never know what we're capable of, particularly with the form we're in right now. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.